Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Mrs. Peel, Speed. It's an urgent job. Get to Paul Ryder. He's just moved and taken a house on the other side of the park. Now, I don't know the address, and he hasn't yet got a phone number. But find out from the ministry. Mother will know. You get to Paul Ryder as soon as you can, understand? The message received right, Steve. But why, Steve? Well, there's been another escape from here, the Old Hill Monastery. Now, you must get hold of Ryder and tell him. Tell him that Lubin is out. You got it? Lubin is out. Lubin broke out of here a short while ago, and if he gets to Ryder, one thing is certain. He'll kill him. Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user. This is what Mrs. Lyons of Yellowwood Park, Durban, has to say. It is the one party that does everything. Well, for me, I know that. Yes. There's so many things that I've, I've used and experimented with just to prove cold water OMO, really to put it to the ultimate test, you know, and I find that it's, well, it's come up to all my expectations. Yes. Cold water OMO cleans best. Episode 3 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel encounter another killing and receive another threat by an enemy to achieve a getaway. John Steed had been horrified when George Neville, one of his best friends and one of the finest secret agents in Britain, had been murdered. Steed knew who the killer was because Neville had managed to gasp out the name, Rostov, before he died. Rostov, Steed knew, was one of the three men sent to England to kill three top British agents in the case known as the Great Assassination Plot. The plot had failed, and the three men, Rostov, Lubin, and Esdov, had been captured and imprisoned in Old Hill Monastery, a tightly guarded Gothic building near London. Steed had visited the monastery and been present when the second escape had been effected. Lubin had got away. Steed, knowing that Lubin's target was Paul Ryder, had hastened to the phone to alert Mrs. Peel. Mrs. Peel got on with the task straight away, but she had a little difficulty in finding Ryder's new address. It was a new house on the other side of the park. Ryder himself was doing a little decorating standing on a ladder, painting a cupboard in the bathroom bright red, when he heard a voice calling, Ryder. Ryder. Who is it? Oh, I'm coming. Ryder climbed down the step ladder and walked into his bedroom. The voice called again, echoing round the half-empty house. Ryder. Ryder. I'm going to kill you, Ryder. What the devil? Who are you? And where are you? Ryder walked from the bedroom into his sitting room. I've come to kill you, Ryder. I'm in the bathroom now. Ryder retraced his steps back into the bathroom. I'm going to complete my assignment. But first, I'd like you to see me. Ryder, who'd been staring around him at the white-tiled walls, suddenly found himself face to face with Lubin. Lubin held a gun in one hand. Ryder backed away, crashed into the stepladder as Lubin fired. <laughs> Peel had just arrived in her car outside the house when she heard the shot. She leapt from the car and tore up the driveway into the house. The front door was open. She rushed in. Paul! Paul, where are you, Paul? From under the bathroom door flowed a bright red trickle. Mrs. Peel stopped. And then, characteristically and courageously, kicked the door open and shot in. Paul! Paul! Mrs. Peel saw the dead man lying in a pool of red paint that oozed from the paint tin. She glanced around. 
There were footsteps in the paint, red footprints that led to about a foot from the wall. Mrs. Peel looked around with confusion, and then she heard... What the devil? There, in front of her eyes, were red footprints forming, walking through the open door and down the corridor, slowly fading as the paint wore off, fading into nothing. <laughs> In Steed's apartment, later... Paul Ryder. They got Paul Ryder. They got him. I'm sorry, Steve. And you were there seconds later. Split seconds. I heard the shots ran into the house and... No Lubin. No Lubin. But he couldn't have got past me, Steve. It was just plain impossible. The whole business is impossible. Lubin appears, then he disappears. Steve, you don't believe in invisible men, do you? No, I most certainly do not. Steed walked across to his briefcase and opened it, producing a vodka bottle. Well, there's only one course left, ma'am. Steve, that isn't the answer. Huh? Alcohol won't help. You've got to be strong. That is a clue. Ooh, that vodka. Vodka. Intoxicating liquor. You know, I'm sure Lubin was a teetotaler. Well, it's easy to check on. Bound to be on file, isn't it? You want me to check at the ministry? Yes, well, I'd check at the monastery. <laughs> So, Steed went back to Old Hill Monastery and checked with Colonel James. You know, I think you're right, Steed. Lubin didn't drink when he first came here. Then a month or two ago, he put in a request to allow him a liquor ration. But we let them have a bottle a month, you know. Do you think it might have some bearing upon things? Perhaps. Let's see how. I imagine you check every bottle. <laughs> I do better than that. <laughs> I sample them personally. <laughs> this one's rather a good blend. There's possibly nothing in it. Well, then probably took the drink through sheer boredom. Hmm. Esdorf. What about him? He's the only one of the trio left, Colonel. Well, we've trebled the guard and make spot checks right round the clock. Guards and checks haven't done much good so far. For pity's sake, Steve, what more can I do? Chains and manacles? If we have to resort to that, we might as well... Go in the other side, yes. <laughs> yes, I agree. I'd like to see Esdorf again, all the same. <laughs> he entered the cell, Esdorf was doing some physical exercises. Set you five. <laughs> ah, Steed again. I thought all you did was think. Think and plan. But the plan remains the plan unless one has the physical prowess to put it into action. You're still planning to run away from us, Esdorf? Run? No, I don't think I shall run. I shall walk. A measure trade. I shall regard my freedom as one does an exotic drink. A fine cigar, or a beautiful woman. I shall save it. A pace at a time. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Steed. I shall not be running. You uh, put out a fine show of confidence. I'm also being incredibly well-mannered. Delicately avoiding taboo subjects. I'm leaving you to mention the unmentionable. It begins with the letter L. Lubin? Ah, you brought it out into the open. I wanted to spare your feelings. Cheers. Cheers. What was it you said on the last occasion? You're bluffing. Well, what's that? And now you say I am putting on a fine show of confidence. <laughs> well, am I? So you will escape. I will escape. And complete your assignment? Yeah. It has kept me sane all the time I have been here. The thought that one day, one day, I would do what I was sent here to do. That I wouldn't be cheated of it. <laughs> you can depend upon it. I will complete my assignment. And who is your target? <laughs> you would like to know, wouldn't you? Well, you've been so forthcoming about your escape. Uh, I should... You would like to know who I was assigned to kill. You tried to extract that from me before, during the weeks of interrogation. I told them they wouldn't break you. Not you. You're too good at your job, Esdorf. Oh, better than you, Steve. Had the circumstances been reversed, would you have broken? <laughs> I don't think so. They are evenly matched, you and I. Perhaps. Well, I shall leave you. That's why they chose me, of course. Pardon? I said, that's why they chose me. It amuses me to tell you this now, Steve. It's you, Steve. 
You are my target. You are the man I am going to kill. Well, of course, after finding that out, I'll assign a special bodyguard to you, Steve. Well, that won't be necessary, thank you, Colonel. Yeah, but if it's you, Estorff is after. If he gets out... Then it's up to you to see that he doesn't get out, isn't it? Yes, the answer could lie with Dodge. Dodge? You mean Professor Percival Dodge? The man who vetted this place and gave it its final clearance? The Ministry's pet escapologist? That's right. He's what you might call a scientific Houdini. He's bound to have a few ideas tucked away. I'll go and see Dodge. And so Steed did. In the Ministry of Technology, the sign on the door read, Prof. Percival Dodge, Testing Division, Keep Out. Steed entered. Uh, Professor? Professor Dodge? There was a sound from inside a large wall safe. The safe door swung open. The professor stepped out with the casualness of a man leaving a taxi cab. Ah, Steed. How are you? Fine. And you, Professor? Uh, excellent health. Yes. I always say that if you can break out of a safe, you can invariably get in. Oh, well, invariably. I'm glad you agree. If we put our secrets in there, we might as well post them to the enemy. No, the safe's no good. The professor reached out onto his desk, seized a rubber stamp, and stamped at the top of the safe. Reject. When Dodge says it's secure, only then can you be sure. There's such three safes they've reckoned lived up to the name. And they don't. After that pile of locks, I, I unpicked them with a hairpin in ten minutes flat. Uh, what have we got here? Handcuffs. It says they're escape-proof. Care to try them on, Steve? <laughs> Professor Dodge, without waiting for Steve's consent, slapped the handcuffs around his wrists. Steve looked a bit helpless. Uh, Professor Dodge, it's about the Old Hill Monastery. Oh, yes? <laughs> My best piece of work. I have the plans here, strangely enough. Perfect planning. No one could escape from that. Rostov and Lubin managed it. What? A getaway? A gotaway. That's why I'm here. That's impossible. It's escape-proof. Escape-proof? Like these? Steed twisted his wrist slightly and dropped the handcuffs onto the professor's desk. Then he reached for the rubber stamp and slapped it down on the Old Hill Monastery plans. Reject, professor? Any idea why? Housewives everywhere are discovering new Lux Cream of Lemon dishwashing liquid. Have you tried it, ma'am? Yes, I like it. Kind for my hands. And you? Yes. Gets my dishes sparkling clean. And you, ma'am? And, and no, I haven't tried it yet. If you haven't yet tried new Lux Cream of Lemon dishwashing liquid, now's the time. New Lux Cream of Lemon really cares for your hands and gets your dishes sparkling clean. Lux Cream of Lemon at your shop now. So many women tell us that once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Women like Mrs. Clark of East London. This is certainly the one that I've stuck to. And it's all I get now. Yes, cold water OMO cleans best. Over a million housewives have proved it. The Avengers. Every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. Cold Water Omo.